Okay guys, let's go through the two solutions for the uh, more advanced homework questions on the back. Hopefully you started the child versus the truck already and uh, you're watching the video because you know you did something wrong and you can't figure out what. So the first thing I would do for this question is read the question and make sure to see what the unknown is. It says what distance does the girl run? So on your givens list, distance for the child is what you want to make X. I guess I should have, oh, never mind. Okay, and like I said in class, here, let me take this off the clipboard so I can move the paper around more. Like I said in class before you left, uh, wherever you have the unknown variable that you're trying to solve for, put the other unknown variable as well. And your two unknown variables are always gonna be distance and time. So if unknown distance is going to be X here for the child, let's make the unknown time for the child the other easy unknown, Y. And the reason we do that is because that sort of guarantees that at least one of the formulas that you write out is going to be an easy formula. Okay, the rest of the question. The child is running at a maximum speed of four meters a second, so she's just a constant speed object. Moving over to the truck, the truck uh, starts from rest, so V1 equals zero. Uh, the truck is 20 meters ahead of the girl, so the girl's 20 meters back. Let's be careful with that. So if the, if the child has to run distance X to catch the truck, pretend this is the, the child, and this is the truck in the beginning. So she starts running after the truck, the truck starts moving, and at some point down the way, they catch up. So if she runs distance X, the truck doesn't have to cover that, that 20 meter head start that she had to run in the beginning. So the distance for the truck is going to be X minus 20. So her full distance, but subtract off 20 meters of it and that's what the truck moves. Okay, and it accelerates away at one meter a second. Now there's no hesitation time here. The truck begins to roll away, the girl starts running after it, so we don't have to add on or subtract a certain number of seconds. The child runs for time Y, the truck moves for the same time Y. And that's it. If you have the givens list made correctly, you are mostly done the question. So now it's a matter of looking up the formula that matches each one of these givens lists. The child is constant speed, D equals VT. The truck is the physics formula with no V2 in it. So D equals V1T plus one half AT squared. And I'm gonna make things a little bit easier for myself right off the bat because I can see the V1 is zero. That whole first term here is going to be zero times T or just zero. So I'm going to kind of cheat a little and ignore it right away. So now you fill in the givens. The child distance is X equals a speed of four times her time. So there's a nice easy expression. And that was part of the point of putting both unknown variables on the same object. And the truck, we'll make the substitutions here. Distance is X minus 20 equals uh, one half of A. I can see that A is one. So I'm actually just gonna skip a line of work here. One half of one is still one half, or I'll write 0 0.5. For no specific reason, I just hate using fractions. So half of the acceleration times Y squared. and time squared, and time is y, so y squared. And there is your second expression. So all is quite easy so far. And looking at these two formulas, the logical substitution is quite obvious. I'm gonna sub formula number one into formula number two for x. So we will have four y minus 20 on the left-hand side equals 0 0.5 y squared. This all sounds wonderful, it's easy. Unfortunately, it's gonna be quadratic formula, so let me push everything over to the right-hand side. Zero equals 0 0.5 y squared 
minus 4y and plus 20. And there is your A, your B, and your C. So now you switch to however you want to do quadratic formula on a calculator or on a computer program. I never do quadratic formula manually, but very, very quickly, I'm going to show you something. Um, underneath the square root sign in quadratic formula, so without even writing out the whole quadratic formula, it's b squared minus 4ac. So without even looking at the whole formula, when you go to do that part, you're going to have b squared, so negative 4 times negative 4 is going to be 16 minus 4 times a times c. And there are no other negative signs there. So you are going to have 16 minus 40. That's a negative number. You cannot have a negative under a square root sign. It doesn't work. So you didn't make a mistake on this question if you got this far. There's no solution. Now what does that mean? Well, physically, if I can draw a picture of this to make it a little bit easier to understand, let me back the camera up. If you were to draw a position time graph and actually graph these functions, or if you tried to graph them on a, on a calculator or something like that, here's what you have. Here's position zero. This is where the girl starts to run. 20 meters ahead of her is the ice cream truck. It begins to move and it immediately begins to accelerate. So the idea is she has to move with enough slope to intersect that line. If she moves this fast, she catches the truck. If she moves this fast, she catches the truck. If she even moves this fast, whoops, she just barely catches the truck before the, the two graph lines begin to diverge. And the problem is running at four meters a second maybe looks like this. So as she continues on and on and on and on, and the truck continues on and on and on, the lines just further diverge, further and further away from one another, and there is no intersection point. So the poor girl does not get her ice cream. She doesn't get her ice cream. And that's it. You can't continue the question any further. So every once in a while, you'll actually have questions that have no solution. Let's move on to the second question, since this is just taking up what you hopefully already tried. Oh, the stone versus the ball. Like I said, we had this on assignment number one at Brock University, and coming out of high school, we were not used to the idea of questions being variable-based. But listen, just do the question exactly the same way that you would if you had numbers. A stone is dropped from a cliff. The V1 of the stone is zero. Actually, let me backtrack. What's the unknown? Let's look at the last sentence. Uh, for how many seconds will the ball travel upwards? So we want the ball's time. I'm going to make that an unknown y. And because that's the unknown y, I'm going to make the ball's distance the unknown x. Let's stick both of the easy variables on one object, and hopefully its formula will be a little easier. Okay, so the stone drops, v1 equals zero. The acceleration is gonna be 9.8 meters per second, but you know what? The rest of the question is all variables. Let's stick to variables. The acceleration is gonna be g, the gravitational acceleration of Earth. And I'm gonna put a plus sign in front of it just to stress that it, the stone gets faster and faster and faster as it falls. We don't know the v2 of the stone. It's gonna hit the ground with some speed, but that's not given. We do know the, the, the distance that the stone is going to fall though, because if the ball rises x, here let me draw a picture of this, here's our cliff. If the stone drops and the ball rises, at some point they're going to intersect. Now if the stone, sorry, if the ball rises distance x, that's what we're looking for, how far does the stone fall? Well, if you had numbers in this question, you would know the height of the cliff. It says right in the beginning that the cliff is h meters high. So we would have known the height of the cliff. 
So this is very much like the skyscraper question. The distance for the stone is h minus x. What about the time? While well, the ball and the stone are both thrown at the same moment, there is no hesitation, there's no waiting. So if the ball's time is y, the stone's time is y. We need a couple other things here. Let's go over to the ball's list. It does say that the, the ball is thrown upwards with an initial speed v1. So that means, even though you don't know the value for v1, it would have been given. We would have known this. The, the speed of the ball would have been v1. And we do know the acceleration of the ball on the way up. It would be slowing down with gravity. I know this looks like a ridiculous set of givens that you would never have come up with on your own, but you have to realize if every variable mentioned in the question was given as a number, you would have written down all these numbers. So yes, you would have had complete givens lists. It's, it's a difficult thing to digest, but this list is not different than what you would have actually had. Let's write a formula for the stone. There's no V2, so it's D equals V1T plus 1 half AT squared. And right away I can see V1 is zero, so I'm gonna immediately take that out. D is H minus X equals 1 half of A. A is positive G, so it would be one half of g multiplied by t squared, which is a y. Okay, so there's one expression. Don't worry that it looks ridiculous. An expression for the ball. Same formula, d equals v1t plus one half a t squared but slightly different substitutions because V1 isn't zero. So our D would be X, V1 would be whatever they gave us, time would be Y, plus one half A, and A is negative G, that's very important. It's slowing down 9.8, and the time is Y squared. Here's our second expression. Um, easiest substitution that I can see is this is already isolated for X. Let's take the entire formula number two and substitute it in right here. And be careful because there's a negative sign in the formula that's gonna change all of these signs. So let's rewrite formula number one as H minus. So our first substitution, V1Y would be minus V1Y and our next substitution, be careful, there's a negative sign here. So this would be negative one-half gy squared multiplied by a negative is going to be positive, or let me write it like this. Negative, negative one-half gy squared would equal the entire right-hand side, uh, half gy squared. these two negative signs become a positive. So we would have H minus V1Y plus 0.5 GY squared equals 0.5 GY squared. Now a rule that you knew a long time ago in grade nine is if you have the same things on both sides of the equal sign and the signs are the same, they cancel each other out. Or if you were to bring this half gy squared over to the right, it would become negative. So half gy squared minus half gy squared, they take each other out of the formula. So you have h minus v1y equals zero. What is this question asking? It's asking you to solve for time. So solve for y. Solve for y. I mean, solve for y as best you can. If you bring h to the other side, we'd have minus V1Y equals minus H. If you isolate it for Y, you'd bring the negative V1 to the other side. Be careful, this is multiplication. So it would you'd have to divide by negative V1 and divide by negative V1. The signs cancel. And Y would equal H divided by V1. And that's an okay answer because both of those variables were given in the beginning. 
H would have been given as a number and V1 would have been given as a number. So sure enough, if you were to look up the answer in the back of the textbook, this question actually uh, was in our textbook in university. When we flipped to the answers at the back and looked up time and the answer was H over V1, I, I don't want to say anything rude, so I'm going to stop right there. But let's just say we almost, we couldn't believe it. We could not believe that that was the answer and that actually came out of that formula. The reason I gave you this is not to freak you out because you won't see anything like this until next year. But I have to start leaning you toward that idea that even when questions don't have numbers in them whatsoever, you, you don't get afraid. You still do them exactly the same way as if you had numbers and you work them out and see what you get in the end. So as it stands right now, that's it for complex mechanics. If you're kind of fuzzy on it, I, everything's gonna stay posted for the entire semester, so look over things again. I don't think you need more questions. I think you need to look at the questions that we did and keep these two questions sort of in the back of your head and in a place in your notes where you know they're not going to be on any assessments here in grade 12, but you will see questions like this uh, next year.